Thank you very much, Keith. We're live at the Providence Civic Center. You're getting a panoramic view. A surprisingly good crowd on hand. I say that because this is Boston Red Sox territory and everybody was watching the Yankees throttle the Red Sox 7-0 on a two-hitter by Ron Guidry, narrowing the baseball gap in the American League East to one game. Bill Goodman, the timekeeper, is in the ring, the ring announcer. He is introducing first young Floyd Mayweather, 24 years of age, a record of 15 and 1, 8 KOs, weighed in as you just heard at 146. Floyd Mayweather. He is a quick handed fighter. He has good foot movement, puts, pu puts punches together well, does not, in point of fact, have punching power. One common opponent with the young man about to be introduced. That's Sugar Ray Lennon. From Silver Springs, Maryland. Coming opponent from Mansfield, Ohio. Art Way, McKnight. There's Sugar Ray. There's the record. Olympic champion of the world. Undefeated in the pro ranks. Sugar Ray Leonard. Hugely popular wherever he goes, wherever he fights. The young man who relies on speed of hands and speed of feet can hurt with Andrew either Henry. hand, not a one-punch knocker out well, It's his flurries that are so Martin effective, and the Taper. accumulative punishment can do away with the opponent. So he did away with Art McKnight on a TKO in the seventh round. Mayweather won an easy decision over Art McKnight just a few weeks ago. Mayweather is managed by Hank Grooms, a shrewd manager, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Good fighters in his stable. It was Hank Grooms who in our voluntarily discontinued U.S. Boxing Championship Series caused us trouble, frankly, because of the difficulty in verifying the records of his fighters. But no question about Mayweather's record. It is 15 and 1. Also in Mayweather's corner will be Dale Williams, while in Sugar Ray's corner, Angelo Dundee. You see him in the middle there. Taking the weekend off, in a sense, from his chores with Muhammad Ali. He'll be back with Ali in New Orleans early tomorrow morning. Dave Jacobs, the old mentor of Sugar Ray, is in the corner, and so is Jenks Port. We're about ready to go with the action. Live, repeat live from the Providence Civic Center. Scoring will be on a five-point must system. Two judges and the referee will score. We have the three knockdown rule. Here they allow a standing eight count. The ring is tiny. They say 17 feet, I measured it, and it's slightly less than that. Should help Sugar Ray, since Mayweather can punch. Action underway. The referee in the ring is Martin Tabor. Well known in these parts, veteran official. One thing about Groom's fighters, I speak of, speak of men like Bonzel Johnson and Greg Covers. They're shrewd, they know how to fight. Grooms teaches them well. Note that quick flicking left to Mayweather. Quick handed fighter. I would think in this fight, Sugar Ray will take some of those jabs in order to get inside and do real punching damage because he is much the better puncher. However, we'll see. Just the start of things. Schedule 10 rounds. Sugar Ray to the right of your screen. Mayweather to the left, unaccountably. Both fighters wearing white trunks. Sugar Ray trying to score with the right there. Mayweather with the red stripes. Good left jab, Mayweather. Watch out for the right lead with Sugar Ray. He has styled himself to a degree after Muhammad Ali, whose moves he sometimes so closely resembles, especially when he uses the shuffle. than a minute to go in round one. No damage done. No really effective blow scored. Mayweather boxing. Sugar Ray not yet getting through. Referee 
Steve Jaber telling them to have jaw the clincher. Fifteen seconds to go and this the first round. Coming down now to the end of round one. The bell for second round action here in the Providence Civic Center. No damage done in the first round. Between rounds, Dundee exhorting Sugar Ray Leonard to go to the body. Try and get Mayweather's guard down. Remember I told you Mayweather's a quick-handed fighter with a good long left for the weight division. And so Sugar Ray goes to the body with a left. Earlier in the program, we gave you a partial score. Missouri three, Notre Dame nothing. That upset is now official. Missouri's Tigers upset the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame national champions of a year ago. The score was three to nothing. The margin of a field goal. Sugar Ray in there with a good combination. Second round action. Ray in the white trunks, no stripes. Made out of the white trunks. Good strikes. Mayweather putting up a good scrap thus far. There has been insistent press criticism that Leonard's opponents have been less than worthy. Dundee pays little attention to it. He thinks Leonard has the makings of a champion, wants to bring him along his own way. Again, Leonard tries to go to the midsection. First time he did it successfully, not the second time. Then a quick flashing left to the head. Mayweather's problem is he can't punish. to the last minute of round two. So far, there's been no opportunity for the familiar Leonard Flurry, but now he's beginning to become effective. And that's through the use of the body blows that Dundee told him to throw. Now we're seeing more of Leonard as we're used to seeing. Down to the end of the round in the lower right hand corner of the screen. Leonard amateurishly left himself open after missing, but he scored with a good right there. And he hurt Mayweather just a little bit as he had Mayweather against the ropes. End of the round coming up. <laughs> round three underway at the Providence Civic Center. We're live. Sugar Ray Leonard, white trunks, no stripes. Floyd Mayweather, white trunks and stripes. Mayweather, you see him there. Leonard in effect in a rope of dope. Leonard's left eye thumbed in the last round, worked over by Dundee. When you're fighting a man like Mayweather, you have to take it to him because you know he can't knock you out. Only in the last half of the second round did Leonard begin to take it to him, using body blows as his principal weapon. Bill Ray seeks to go to the body, tire the opponent, weaken him, and get the guard down so he can move up to the head. Got him with a good right in that exchange. Leonard did. Pursuit of Mayweather. See him go to the belly and then up to 
of the head. Ropes are a bad place to be. Leonard not likely to punch himself out. Not at age 22. Mayweather in a little bit of trouble there. Not as much as the fans seem to think as they rise to their feet. Good right lead by Leonard. Scored heavily. Now Mayweather stunned. Now he's a sitting duck. But he covered well. Half slipped as referee Marty Tabor separated. That right lead again, then the left. Mayweather absorbing punishment this round. Trying to fight out of it with a flurry. Warning from Tabor to Mayweather. Mayweather returns to his type of rope a dope. And so Leonard cleans up on him, scored with a left and right combination. Now Mayweather is in real trouble, just covering the head, hoping that Leonard perhaps will punch himself out. Totally one sided bout. Almost to the end of the third round. And look at Leonard. Throwing those wide rights. Round four just underway. Providence Civic Center live. Sugar Ray Leonard in the white trunks without stripes. Floyd Mayweather in the white trunks with red stripes. Last round was no contest. Sugar Ray Leonard pouring it on. Took on the appearance of a mismatch. In the first round, Mayweather fought cleverly, quick handed. Harry comes back, or at least tries to. I want to advise our local stations at the end of this round, we'll be going to a station break. Mayweather trying to come back in this round, using the left to keep Leonard away from him. Leonard looking over to Dundee. Half looking over for instructions. Angie Dundee guiding Sugar Ray Leonard's career. Sugar Ray had Mayweather in trouble. That was a slip. Crowd immensely enthusiastic, but not immensely knowledgeable. We're more than halfway into the fourth round, and thus far, Mayweather has been boxing decently. Leonard is throwing everything in the third round, is apparently not in this round, up to this point. Table warning Mayweather not to hit on the break. Fifty seconds left in this, the fourth round. Crowd yells, but that was a slip. Crowd thought it was a knockdown. Mayweather is in his way, a slick cookie. Now he's taking it again on the rope and dope. Slick because he knows all the tricks on the inside and on the outside. He'll thumb you and use the elbows if he can, the shoulders if he can. He's been taught by the canny Hank Grooms. Oh, that was a good left that staggered Mayweather against the ropes. We'll return with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this from our local stations. Got him going from the body. 
Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. to give it to Ke coming now the bell rang early Sugar Ray ran across the ring Mayweather wasn't ready Sugar Ray stepped back live from the Providence Civic Center crazy happening thought Leonard was going to kill him while he was totally unprepared. But as a sportsman, he stepped back. Fifth round action. As these rounds start, Mayweather uses the left. And while he doesn't register any punishment, he achieves the objective of keeping Leonard off him. The end of the fourth round, Mayweather was staggered by a left hook by Leonard. And between rounds, Dundee said he's ready to go. Go in and get him. Round is almost half over. Mayweather there. Mayweather again with that left. We're a minute 45 into this, the fifth round. Mayweather using that left effectively in this round. Sugar Ray Leonard hasn't gotten to him. That was a blow to the back. Made Mayweather look like he was staggered. He was just off balance, not staggered. Only a half minute to go in this round. And a good round, I think, for Mayweather. Certainly Leonard's done little, if anything. All right, we're counting down to the end of the round. Let's go quickly to Bill Fleming in Seattle, live for an update on NCAA football. There were two big stories in the Missouri upset of Notre Dame today. The first was the score. Jeff Brockhouse kicked a 33-yard field goal with 12.50 to go in the fourth quarter for the only score in the game. The second big surprise was the Missouri defense. Four times they stopped Notre Dame inside the 20, and at one time in the third quarter stopped the Irish on the two-inch line. Missouri winning 3 to nothing. the first time the Irish have been shut out at home since 1960 when Michigan State did it 21 to nothing. Another upset in the making. Texas Tech leading USC at the closing moments of the second quarter, six to nothing in Los Angeles. And again, SC was stopped on the two yard line and Texas Tech took over on downs. We've got a great ball game coming up here today, UCLA at Washington. Now let's go back to Howard Cosell and the fight in Providence. We're back live at the Providence Civic Center. We're going into the sixth round. Sugar Ray Leonard to the right of your screen. Floyd Mayweather, as you see him now, to the right of your screen. So far, Sugar Ray Leonard has not been the Sugar Ray Leonard that we have seen in the past. Maybe it's because Floyd Mayweather knows how to fight. Sugar Ray, as Mayweather played rope a dope, did hurt him in the second and in the third and staggered him with a left hook in the fourth. But overall, there haven't been the combinations and flurries. There hasn't been 
the clean, crisp, effective punching. And he's not been able to resort to the shuffle when he knows he's in charge. Almost a minute into round six. It's a scheduled ten round. Figure on the move. Mayweather seeking to go to the stomach. Threatening the bolo punch. Sugar Ray was. That's good show, but not good fighting. Time remaining in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Lost mouthpiece. They don't put it back in under the rules here as they do in some jurisdictions. Steaming hot in this arena. It's like a sauna bath. One minute left in the round. This is the sixth round. Leonard looking for one shot to get in. Not able to do it. Back to the rope dope goes Mayweather and he covers well. <laughs> 30 seconds left in the sixth round. Good, stinging left, finally, by Leonard. 15 seconds to go. Coming up to the end of the round. Back at the Providence Civic Center, round seven, just beginning. Sugar Ray Leonard to the left, Floyd Mayweather to the right. Watch the low shot, bro. Sugar Ray Leonard probably ahead in the scoring. I would say certainly ahead in the scoring, but not impressive. Floyd Mayweather, a guy who knows how to cover. A guy who knows the tricks of the trade at a very tender age. Warded off Leonard throughout the fight, or most of it, with his own left. Right there, Leonard scored with a left and right in combination. But he'll clinch with you, he'll tie you up, he'll thumb you, he'll elbow you. And right now, Leonard is doing some of the same thing. That was a good left by Leonard. Quick flurry by Mayweather. Leonard covered on it. Ray is not getting movement. He's not, he's not able to find space for his blows. seen the constant flurries that we've come to recognize in Leonard. Either it's Mayweather's style and tactics and efficiency, or Leonard is, for whatever reason, having an off afternoon. One minute to go in the round. It's the seventh round. Seems to me Leonard hasn't used that right lean enough. It's been effective. Used it very well in the past in his pro career and his amateur career. He doesn't have the look of an alive fighter. Mayweather got in a good left again. Mayweather dancing. Leonard pursuing. 
Mayweather slipped a little. He was not staggered. Less than a half minute to go in the round. Leonard fighting his best in the last minute of each round. A good left caught Mayweather flush. 15 seconds to go. Mayweather whirling around. Leonard trying to finish. Leonard having him hurt and in trouble. Now we've got eight seconds left and less counting down. Coming up now, the end of round seven. We're back in the Providence Civic Center, the start of round eight. Between rounds, exhortations in Sugar Ray Leonard's corner. We're sitting right under Sugar Ray's corner. Use his left to keep it out there. He has not been. He has not been fighting like the Sugar Ray we see. We have seen. And I remarked that I would have thought he'd use the right lead more, which has been effective. I asked Dundee to tell me the truth. If Sugar Ray has a damaged right hand, he said, no, I'm telling you the truth. There's nothing wrong with it. Still waiting to see that led with the right to the midsection there. Mayweather, as I said, is clever. He knows how to fight. At least three times in this fight, Leonard has apparently had Mayweather in trouble. But each time, Mayweather survived and came back fighting, as he is doing right now. Leonard's been at his best in the final minute of each round. Dundee knows his business. For those who keep saying put Leonard in against stronger opponents, Angie has his own timetable. It calls for two years and more for Sugar Ray Leonard to fight for the championship if he gets that far. Matter of fact, he's supposed to fight in the Baltimore Civic Center October the 6th. Remember at the end of last round, Mayweather was in trouble. Now, as we come into the final minute of the round, sure enough, the pattern repeats. Sugar Ray takes charge. There's Mayweather with the rope and dope. He does cover well, but he has taken punishment. Dundee told him, told Leonard, when he goes to the rope and dope, move to the side. And, oh, a good left that stunned Mayweather. Now he's in real trouble. There's the knockdown from the right. That left started it off. A stinging left hook. Mandatory eight count. Mayweather tells referee Tabor he's fine. Now, Leonard feels in charge, pulls the shuffle. Now you're saying the Sugar Ray Leonard we've become accustomed to. I don't know if he'll call that a knockdown or not. I thought he was wrestled to the floor. Tabor asking him if he's all right. Okay. I still don't know if he officially called on a knockdown or not. We're at the end of the round. No commercial. We'll stay with it. Sugar Ray, finally, staggering. Mayweather with a stinging left hook, and then flooring him with a following right. Then you saw Leonard, grown confident, suddenly reinvigorated, do the shuffle, and put Mayweather all hey, over the ring. Second time Mayweather went down, it looked more like a wrestle. Let me check with our official timekeeper. Was that ruled an official knockdown the second dime down? Yes, he tells us yes, they scored it a knockdown. A knockdown. So we have had two knockdowns. Let's look at it in slow motion. Watch this. There's the left. Leonard came up from the waist with that left. And that was, put, that was what put Mayweather in desperate trouble. And then that right was the final straw. Down went Mayweather first. And quickly, Leonard goes at him in the ninth round with the right. That right lead, if you've got a tired fighter, can kill you against an orthodox Right-handed, I mean, fresh fighter, it can get you into trouble. It was a trademark of Ali's. 
And young fighters patterning themselves after Ali use it. Mayweather trying to come back using the left jab. But remember I told you at the outset of the fight, Mayweather cannot hurt you. And that is a tremendous deficit, of course, in a fighter. Mayweather flicking the left. Sugar Ray looking for the one open. Sugar Ray with the right again. That blow has been his most effective apart from that one stinging left that got Mayweather into trouble. We're a minute and five seconds into this round. Fight pattern is clear as you look at the clock winding down. Sugar Ray looking to finish Mayweather off. Mayweather had a touch of life at the start of the round with his flicking left, but Leonard knew what he was about. He knows he's in command now. clever and he is game he's proved that he's been tough for Leonard to get through to consistently now Mayweather is tired again against the ropes he begins to absorb the same kind of punishment we've seen with 30 seconds left to go in the ninth round seconds left and Sugar Ray looking again to finish him off. The pattern redundant. We're almost at the end of the round. Let's go to Dave Dalton, in New York. Hi everyone, this is Dave Dials in New York. This is a big day in college football and in sports of all kinds. And to catch you up on what's happening in college football, some upsets in the making and one already made. Andrea Kirby. Let's take a look at three of them, Dave. Second ranked Oklahoma in the second quarter is leading Stanford 21 to 10. But here is that upset of the day we were talking about. Missouri has beaten the, na the national defending champion, fourth ranked Notre Dame, three to nothing. And that is a final. What a way to start the season. One other score for you, Texas Tech nine over number seven, Southern California nothing. And that is a halftime score, David. Okay, in baseball, the Yankees continue to wallop the Red Sox. Today it was seven to nothing. Those Yankees now one game behind. The U.S. Open tennis finalists are going to be Borg versus Connors and Chrissy Ebert versus 16-year-old Pam Shriver. And now back to Howard Cosell. We're back for the tenth and final round. It's been amazing how in the final minute of each of the last three rounds, Sugar Ray Leonard has really registered heavy punishment, but Mayweather survives. And then during the first two minutes of the following round, he would fight creditably, using his left effectively. In Leonard's corner between rounds, they told him once and for all, get in there early and finish him off. But he has not been able to do it. See, look at Mayweather come right back, the same pattern, using his left, dancing and moving. Then he gets tired and he becomes a sitting duck. But still he has the technique, the cleverness to cover enough to survive. Hank Jones has taught him well. He's got a fatal weakness which sharply limits any future for him. And that's his inability to hurt the opponent. Wow, 
throughout the fight, I must say, it's Mayweather has been using the left jab and not Sugar Ray Leonard. Now, as we approach the final minute, you can see that Mayweather is tiring again and covering, and Sugar Ray is measuring. For Mayweather, it's been a spinning spiral. Now Sugar Ray measuring him. We've got a minute 10 left in the fight. And Ray would like to finish him off. He almost went down then from a left. The shot. Now the flurry combinations. Martin Tabor is giving him a standing eight count. Remember, we allow a standing eight count in Rhode Island under the rules. Wait, he stopped the fight. At first, it looked like a standing eight count. Now it's called a technical knockout. Tabor says Mayweather has had enough. Hank Grooms goes in with his fighter. He didn't believe the call. That, of course, is the manager over the fight, caring about his man. So Sugar Ray Leonard scores a technical knockout in the 10th round. At first, it appeared it would be a standing eight count under the rules of Rhode Island. But then, no. It was called a technical knockout as referee Martin Tabor stopped the fight. So Sugar Ray Leonard wins his 14th consecutive fight, and in nine, the opponent has been stopped or the fight has been halted. So the young man's career continues apace. We'll be right back at ringside after this. There's the winner, Sugar Ray Leonard. Angie Dundee has been taking his gloves off. And now in slow motion, let's look at the way it ended. Referee Marty Tabor receiving strong objection from manager Hank Groom. That left started it. That follow-up left had him somehow keeping his balance. Martin Tabor, the third man in the ring, decently positioned. Now Sugar Ray just measuring the right, the left. And then the right and the left. There was a quick shuffle in there. And Mayweather was a sitting duck, as he was in earlier rounds, in fact, in the final minute. Now Tabor goes in. He senses that Mayweather is in trouble and might suffer undue punishment. It was then, when at first it looked like a standing eight count would be called. See? One. But no, he called it a technical knockout. The second move called it that. So that's it. Sugar Ray Leonard, the winner. Stay tuned now for NCAA College Football UCLA against Washington, which follows immediately over most of these ABC stations. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Orledge, coordinating.